yeah, being 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 first in business matters, and the ability to to change matters. And when you change first, and are the first person to increase your prices, it does crazily give you an advantage over the people around about you, knowing that with rising energy costs, with rising delivery costs, with rising production costs, with the rising costs of raw materials, um, that everything is going to increase in price. And um, it's, you know, the, quest, the question for me is um, sort of on, on a global scale is, is like, where, where is that all going to go? You can't just exponentially increase prices continually forever because, um, and, and it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make it doesn't make sense. Even with energy, it doesn't make sense because as technology increases or gets better, producing energy should become cheaper, not more expensive. Like it should be cheaper today to produce nuclear power. It should be cheaper today to produce hydroelectric power. It should be cheaper today. Why is it like that? And um, is it like that because we don't have infinite resources? Because, you know, we live on a pretty big planet and um, it seems to me like there are enough resources for everybody, right? I mean, we don't, we don't run out of oranges and bananas, right? I mean, we don't. Right, we don't run out of apples and potatoes and things. We we don't. Yeah. Um, so, and this, by the same concept and principle, we shouldn't really run out of um, energy or the ability to produce energy. Um, and energy seems to be very much a on a bigger scale, it's very much a system of control. Uh, and uh, it's a big game, really, is what it is. It's a very big game. It's, it's a game with people's lives. You know, if you, if, you, if you can't pay the bills, you have problems. It's a game with, it's a, it's a game between countries, right? <laughs> Where countries are in the modern world, very often not self-sufficient in their energy production. And that is a that is a weakness to not be self-sufficient in your energy production. If you have to import energy, then uh, um, you don't really have much control over your economy. And, uh, and that itself, that itself is a problem. And part of the rising costs are in fact just the right just the rising costs of what I would call the governmentization of everything, um, which is that uh, government increasingly want to get more and more involved, and as government gets more and more involved, everything gets more and more expensive. Uh, should decide should government decide how much people are paid? I tend to think, no, I tend to think that the market should be regulated uh, by the market itself. And that would then define how much, how much people should be paid. Um, I don't think, uh, I think companies themselves make the right decision. You can't, you can't force a company to increase it, the pay to its employees and not expect there to be some negative impact on that. I mean, you might have a positive impact for three months, but you know, what's the long-term negative impact? 
of that. Um, it, it's the hangover, right? I mean, the, the you, you, you can't continually drink infinite glasses of wine or whiskey without there being some kind of slowdown in processes in the future. So, uh, so what, what, what is that going to be? And that, that's, that's what's called the difference between the visible and the invisible economy, where the visible economy is something very easy to see, but a lot of economics is invisible. People don't see it happening. You don't see, most people don't see the delivery of products to the shop. They don't, they don't, they don't see it happening. Most people don't see the, uh, the trouble and the problems that exist to put something on the shelf. You know, the average person walks into the shop and sees something on the shelf and takes it and buys it and pays for it and walks out. They don't see the, I don't know, the hundred, the hundred years of investment and stress and pressure that's gone into putting that product there. Um, you know, they, they don't they don't think about how the toilet actually got to being there. They don't think about the fact that somebody had to build it. And somebody had to build sewage and canalization and all the elements around about it. They, they don't see the, the the bigger picture of of everything. And, and part of that is unseen economics, which mm. when government gets involved and says, OK, everybody's wages have to increase by 20%. Um, then the company can't invest. They can't invest in new technologies. They can't invest in new employees. Um, they can't invest in building new departments. Uh, they can't invest in making their office spaces nicer for their employees. They can't get little extras for them. Um, Maybe there would be bonuses of training or residential weekends or um, just, just little extras that make everything nice and better. Um, and then those, those extras have to disappear and you get that extra 20%. And you know what that extra 20%, you know what happens to that extra 20%? It gets spent on energy costs. It gets spent on paying your electric bill and your water bill and, um, and your gas bill, and um, that's where it goes. It doesn't go on improving your quality of life. And it definitely doesn't go on being able to afford a, another holiday or, or something like that. It, 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 it's definitely not enough, not enough for that. Um, so uh, the, um, the richest people exist in unregulated markets. I'll say that again, because it's so important. The richest people exist in unregulated markets. Mm -hmm. Regulated by self. Okay. One of the largest profits that you can make in the world is in uh, the buying and selling of illegal drugs. Mm -hmm. It's an unregulated market. There is nobody regulating it. And so there are huge profits to be made. Um, no, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that people should sell illegal drugs. They're illegal for a reason. But I also think that uh, that that market itself is created by the, the concept of the product being illegal, which is a government related concept. I, which stigmatizes it, I, and uh, very often in a positive way, um, you know, as as happened with. You know, that, that's, as is with rebellious cultures, right? Um, so people want to get involved in what they see as dangerous or, or on the edge, um, which is, uh, which is in, in essence, not a good thing, but it's an unregulated market. Therefore, huge, huge, uh, huge profits can be made. Um, goes back to 1913 and the creation of the Federal Federal Reserve in the United States, where bef uh, before the creation of the Federal Reserve, uh, there was no income tax. Nobody was taxed. 
there was agreement between government and business to build infrastructure, but there was no tax. Yeah. So the largest, most successful economy in human history was built without taxes. Why was it built without taxes? Because business requires infrastructure. So it builds infrastructure. Government doesn't require infrastructure. Government requires control, which mm. limits infrastructure. And those two things are in opposition to each other. Um, governments, government creates the role of work and jobs by creating laws and rules. It doesn't, which limit possibility. They don't increase possibility, they limit possibility. It's a reversal of principles and ideas. Um, it's the power of language, actually, because the word regulation, which we take to mean law or rule or in modern parlance and terminology directive, um, originally regulation originally meant to keep regular meaning to not stop something from happening. Mm. Now it means the opposite. Now it means to stop something from happening. If you have regulation, it stops things. Originally, regulation meant to make sure that things don't stop. And uh, we definitely have slowing, by design, slowing economies in Western culture. People can argue that it's maybe always been this way, but um, over the last two to three years, we've definitely seen certain, in certain economic areas, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. And I'm not saying that this is a good or a bad thing. Um, I think that the intelligent people look at the market and they see where the profit margins exist and they gravitate towards those areas. Um, unfortunately, that's been highly controlled, most dominantly by the uh, pharmaceutical industry for the last few years. And that's essentially not really a good thing because you can't medicate yourself to a happy future. <laughs> That's 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 unsustainable. Uh, um, really, it's it's like it's like alcohol. You know, the, the, if you want a basic fundamental concept of the principle of medicine, it's like alcohol. Maybe two or three glasses of wine are, are fine, but when two or three glasses of wine every couple of nights becomes a bottle of wine every night because it grows naturally, yeah. then 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 it, it spirals out of control. And that's that's <laughs> that's a medicated society. And you, you as I said, you can't really medicate yourself to happiness. <clears throat> you can only medicate yourself to kill pain. And uh, what did Carl Jung say about pain? That all pain, all human pain is, is all human pain is the inability to process human suffering. That's a paraphrase of what Carl Jung mm. said. Um, which means that we, we we feel pain because we don't know how to manage our own emotional states, and we then use medication to to try to solve that, and that's a that's a, that's, a, that's an endless process. Um, it's down to numbers again. It's a, you're chasing numbers. That they they uh, they never end. Chasing perfect fitness, it sort of never ends. It's the it's the process that matters. Um, but uh, um, 
what was the point? The point was the regulation by governments of, of, of things that, that make things more difficult. And isn't government supposed to regulate the energy industry so that there is a better free flow of energy to the to the people? Uh, how are people going to buy products if they're poorer? How are people going to buy products if energy costs keep increasing? You can see what's going to happen with fuel. You know, everybody's, it's going to get to the point where, it's getting to the point where, I mean, the taxations on fuel are actually unnecessary. It is not necessary to place any tax on fuel at all. I mean, it, it, again, it's, it's a long-term problem. It goes back to, at least back to, 1913 and even even pre that. Um, well, the problem is, and it's beyond that, and everybody knows that governments are borrowing money. Yeah. And they have to pay that money back with interest, with extra. And what's happening is that the taxation of the fuel is going to pay the interest on the loans that the government have. It's not going back to the people. The idea that the government need the taxation money in order to run the government is not true. They need the taxation money because it doesn't go to running the government. It goes to paying the debt. Mm. And then what happens is as they pay off the debt, in order to run the country, they borrow more money. So the argument that government couldn't run if it didn't have that tax is not true. Because the truth is that that money that is taxed doesn't go back to the people. It goes out of the country. It leaves the country. It doesn't return to the people. And the money goes out of the country to other banks. And then the government borrows money to pay the people. The money that government pays to government is money that it borrows. Not money that it generates. And the money that it collects in taxation a large percentage of it, it's slightly different for each country, but a large percentage of it goes instantly straight out of the country to pay the national debts. And that's what's causing the price increases. The national debts are, are what's causing the price increases. The price increases are in, in essence unnecessary. Um, and that is what nobody wants to talk about because the moment you talk about it, you lose your job instantly. If you're in government and you say, and you, if you're in government and you say, the money that we collect from tax goes to paying national debt, you'll be out of your job within 24 hours. Whoever you are, you'll be gone almost instantly because you're not allowed to talk about it. Because if you talk about it, then you might actually lead to the solving of the problem and the whole problem exists to, um, to, to to feed the monster, which is the invisible zombie banking system that runs everything into the ground. Because the actual other truth is that all of the national banks of all of the nations of Europe are bankrupt. They're all bankrupt. All of the banks are bankrupt. Mm. They've been bankrupted by borrowing money and trying to pay the debt on the money that they borrowed, which is, um, you know, the, the bigger the crime, the harder it is to prosecute somebody for the crime. It's easy to catch the small fish, right? It's really easy to catch the small fish. But to catch the big fish is really difficult. And in terms of finance and regulation, the big banks and the big industries are the big fish. And 
it's really hard to do anything about that because they have so many resources. They're not all bad, but in terms of how the banking industry works, if the average person functioned like the average bank, then the average, or if the average bank functioned like the average person, then the average bank would be in jail because they're all bankrupt. If I was bankrupt, I'd be in prison, right? Same with same with everybody else. Yeah, but you can't put it. But you can't put an organization in prison. That's the problem. You can put a person in prison, but you can't put an organization in prison. And people hide inside of the organizations. There's no such thing as government. There's only people. This is this is the the setup of the system. It's like there's no such thing as Coca Cola. There's only people. There's no such thing as Nestle. There's only people. Right, the, the, the government is not a it, it government is a figment of verbal creation, right? Um, and people say the government because we understand the meaning, but really it's people at the end of the day that uh, that uh, that do things. People hide behind the, the names of big organizations and big big companies, and the. The national debt is the problem that nobody wants to talk about. It. Where did the go? Okay. When the governments of Europe locked down their countries due to the imaginary virus, which may might or might not have been a problem, I don't know. Um, what happened to the economies? All the economies crashed. All the economies of Europe crashed. But government spending increased. Government spending increased in every country. Now, how can government spending increase when the economics are crashing? It's impossible unless governments are borrowing huge amounts of monies from private banks and not telling anybody. Hmm. Scotland in the last two years has gone 30 billion pounds into debt. More, more. The national debt in the last two years increased by 30 billion pounds. Right? It's almost at the point, almost at the point now where, in fact, it is, it's at the point now, it is, it's at the point where every week, every week, the government is overspending. In Scotland alone, the government is overspending in billions, billions, at least two billion, it's, it, it's at least two billion a week overspending money they don't have. And you think increasing the fuel taxes is going to cover that? That's a, it's a joke, right? It's a joke. You know, it's like the fuel taxes are a tiny drop in a huge ocean of a problem. Right? And that's just Scotland. And I'm saying like 30 billion, it might have even be more than that. I mean, something in the back of my head says it's maybe even 300 billion. I mean, I'm not exactly sure of the number. I mean, it's, a, it's, an ex, it's a huge number. I, I posted something on my Facebook because there was, there, was there was a story in the local newspaper about it. And I was just like, that's an incredible number. And people don't understand. And then, and then prices, costs increase. Why do costs increase? To try to cover that money that government spent because government spent money it didn't have if your neighbor buys a big house and a big car with money they don't have it's going to be a massive problem right now every government in Europe has done that for the last two years every government I'm talking billions on a daily basis spending a bill imagine spending a billion pounds a day that you don't have. And then eventually somebody has to pay for that, right? 
Somebody has to pay for that. So one of, one of two things happens in real economics. We don't live in a real economic world, but in terms of real economics, one of two things has to happen. Number one, everybody has to be poor forever. That's one possibility. Or number two, we go to war. Those are, those are the two possibilities. Because war covers the crimes of economics. That's what, that's what war does. War, war is a way of uh, cleaning the table of all the objects that are on the table. We've all seen the situation where somebody gets angry and they just, they turn the table, they turn over the table, they knock over everything off the table, right? And they, they do that to create a different kind of bigger problem to, to change everybody's focus. If you're shit scared that you're gonna die because you go outside and you breathe the wrong kind of air, you're not gonna think about the national debt. <laughs> you're not gonna think about the fact your government is borrowing a billion pounds a day. You're not gonna think about the effect that that has on education and infrastructure and the development of society. You're not gonna think about it. And that is the underlying economic problem is the rising cost of prices are the inevitable result of government overspending money that they don't have and then trying to cover it in some way. And the only way to solve the problem is in fact to not have a government, which is what is going to happen eventually. It's going to happen eventually to every country in Europe. Every country in Europe is going to lose their government. It's going to take about 50 to 100 years. But every country is going to lose their government because the people will eventually realize, the, the smart people will realize that it's not sustainable to have that kind of economic situation. And people will turn to corporations to solve their problems rather than governments. And that is the strength of industry and corporations where the crazy truth is that although governments might have the best interests of people at heart in some cases, um, corporations have a better economic understanding of how to make things work because mm. building a business is helping society. <laughs> it's providing a service and an essential structure because there's no, there's no business that's not necessary, right? Business exists to fulfill the human necessities and maybe desires as well that, uh, that we have as people. And we all know that shopping makes people happy, right? Retail therapy, <laughs> mm. uh, they call it retail therapy, yeah. Um, the uh, ability to spend, there must be a better term than that, uh, maybe expend, the ability to spend money is actually a therapeutic release from the human condition. That's why, you know, classically women go out and buy more clothes than they need to have. Men go out and buy more pieces of technology than they need to have, right? Um, because because it, it it's, a, it's a kind of therapy. It, it's not essentially a bad thing to do, um, but it, it, it helps the flow of society. And when government steps in and does not allow this process to occur, it creates, you know, the end result is at a certain level of anger and resentment in society because of, you, you, see, you see the creation of anger. Government creates anger. It makes people unhappy. The majority of people are unhappy, made unhappy by government. There's a small group of people who are 
made happy <laughs> by the decisions that government makes, but a large number of people who are eternally unsatisfied um, because um, government is the, uh, the the poverty of the people. Um, for the, the the further that government, the further the government puts in its hands, the more it takes out. <laughs> And uh, it's uh, it's sad because it's not real economic growth. It's not real trade either. Government's just the mafia. At the bottom, the bottom line is government's just the mafia. That that's all it is. Government's just the mafia. Now, I'm, the crazy thing is the mafia are not all bad people. Uh, it sounds like a contradiction. It's not. The mafia are not all bad people because not all people are bad. But the government is the mafia as well. It's just it's just mm -hmm. it's just the biggest dog, you know. It's uh, it is sad, but uh, we're sort of at that state in in all Western countries right now, where each government is its own mafia that is extorting as much as it can out of its own people, and. Uh, trying to keep them happy at the same time. It's, it's, government shouldn't be involved in the business of happiness. It should be an individual choice. Um, and so, what does it mean overall? Okay, first of all, it doesn't help us. <laughs> it doesn't help us solve the initial problem, which is the rising costs. Everyone has to deal with rising costs. That's all why, that explains why the costs are rising. Um, but it doesn't help us deal with it. I think the first thing to understand is that things are not going to slow down. They're going to speed up. And uh, just as you pointed out, naturally, prices are going to increase. And those who increase first are going to have some advantages. Also, things are going to speed up. They're going to get faster. As Technology increases in speed as the transfer of information increases in speed. So the problems are going to exponentially grow because humans can't process things as fast as computers. Yeah. Um, they, uh, they, they, we, we, we just can't, we can't store information and process it in the same way that a, that a machine can. Um, and so we might be good at building the machines, but we can't compete with them. Yeah, you know, cars, cars kill people every day, right? That's, and so um, I was uh, talking about the, uh, the fact that things are gonna increase in speed. Yeah, things are gonna get faster and faster. And uh, it's going to be increasingly hard for people to deal with. And um, it's, not, it's not going to get any easier for people, I don't think, over the next, over the next five to 10 years in terms of business and how everything mm -hmm. works. It's not going to get easier at all. It's just going to get more complex. Uh, and there'll be more and more problems as pe as people get as, as economies shrink and people get desperate and people have bills to pay right everyone's got their bills to pay naturally um the the economic situation the economic climate governments don't know what to do about their own economic problems <laughs> they uh that's why they're fast in and fast out you know, they people dive in for three to four years and do whatever it is they want to do, and then they leave the problems behind for somebody else to pick up, <laughs> uh, and they, they move on to something else. And so, uh, it's going to be increasingly difficult for people and businesses to to grow, and growth economies are going to be going to be hard to find, especially as 
economic growth requires economic development. Well, what does that mean? That means that if there was economic development worldwide, then companies could grow into new areas. Like not all of the world is industrialized. You know, I go to parts of Indonesia and parts of India and, um, you know, the Southern Asia, go to Kazakhstan and other cities and places. And you can see that there's room for development and improving the quality of life within society. However, over the last 24 months, these areas and regions of the world have got poorer, not richer. And there have been more problems in these areas. And, um, and as a result, companies can't grow like they want to grow. If there was huge economic growth in certain areas of India and Bangladesh and Sri Lanka, then companies could go there and invest and um, try to expand. And it's, uh, it's very difficult at the moment to, uh, to do that. On the other side, there's consolidation by the big organizations and banks. Um, drive down the world economies and then buy up everything really cheap. Then raise up the economies and sell it, make a profit. <laughs> there's always some, there's always somebody doing that some, somewhere, right? You know, as property prices in certain areas decrease, the economics are driven down, people will buy things. Um, as people are made bankrupt, the banks will come in and just scoop up all the products. And uh, it's good to have people to clean up society. Uh, it's unfortunate, though, that uh, the, the banks should be the people regulating and supporting society. And sometimes they are, and sometimes they're doing it. Sometimes they're do, doing good risk management. And sometimes they're just giving credit cards to everybody and knowing that uh, the people will overspend. And that's not a good thing for anybody at all, especially as we don't have any financial education in schools. <laughs> so uh, um, you would think that that would be the number one topic in schools to have a to have a balanced society if we run a society on economics and everybody would need to study economics in more detail um for some reason it doesn't work like that <laughs>